Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making a page working with complementary colours. So for this page I'm working in my Dina Wakeley little journal, the original journal, and I'm actually working between a canvas page and a cotton rag page. So quite often when I'm doing work in my journals I don't actually gesso my pages and the reason for that is because I tend to be working with acrylic paints anyway and that sort of seals the page anyway. The reason I gessoed this page was because I um, wanted to have the canvas and the cotton rag paper obviously to have the same tone because they're going to work together. Now one thing I will warn anyone about before, if you haven't used the canvas in this um, journal before, it does shrink. So if that really, really bothers you, um, particularly for a double spread like this, maybe just work on two of the cotton rag pages or two of the craft pages. Um, for me, I don't mind it shrinking, it really doesn't bother me, but um, I know that does bother some people. So just be aware that the the um, canvas will shrink. The other thing you need to be aware about is the canvas will take slightly longer to dry obviously because it's a fabric so um, while I was able to stencil on this and I did hit it with a heat gun beforehand it was still slightly damp to the touch so um, just remember that as well. So I'm just starting off in the middle of my page with a large stencil. This one's from the Crafters Workshop and I've just chosen a whole heap of warm colours. So I've got ruby, lemon, tangerine, magenta and fuchsia. And I'm just going through and sort of stenciling out. Mixing up the paint colours, you'll notice I didn't change my sponge. I just sort of used the sponge and, and mixed up the colours. So once I've done one layer of stenciling, I'm actually going back with some different stencils and I'm just stenciling over all of those five colours, just in patches over the middle of my page. Now the reason I'm doing it over the middle of my page is because I kind of have a design layer in my head where I wanted a figure in the middle of my page and I wanted to black out or paint out, sorry, the rest of the page. So um Basically, I was just saving myself time. I could have gone through and stenciled this whole page. It could be a use it up page that I had that had stuff all over the page, but I knew I was going to be painting some of it out. So I was just really selective about where I was putting my, my marks. So the final one is another stencil that I'm using and just putting some red on so for that bold pop of color over the top. So I've got all these warm colors layered over each other. Now this technique will work if you do mix different colors um, obviously you will need to make sure that your layers are dry before you stencil over them otherwise you're going to get some very interesting mucky looking colors um, but um, it it looks really good if you just use either warm colors or cool colors as well so on the back of my page I decided to use this up as my use it up journal partly because when you work on the canvas it will sort of seep through anyway. So I was just using up all the paint that I had left on my page, or sorry on my um, palette and just painting in the background of this second canvas page. So I'm sort of getting two pages for the price of one and that's what I love about um, using up my paint. One, because I don't waste it, and two, I've always got something interesting to go back onto at another stage. So for my image that I'm using, I'm using one of the Dina Wakeley collage faces. Now, if you wanted to draw your face over the top, that would be perfect, um, but I really like these faces, and while I can sort of draw smallish faces, I really haven't challenged myself to draw large faces yet. So that is something I'm going to try and work on this year. But um, until then, I'm very lucky that uh, these faces are available that you can use in your work. So I'm going through with my matte gel medium to glue down my collage tissue and you can see already how that sort of melts into the background. I've got all those beautiful colors in the background. Um, which will be the focus of the face. And you can see that I kind of planned out where I was going to stencil so that most of the images are within that face and the white space on the outside, I don't need to worry about. 
So I decided I wanted to use some contrasting colors in this page and I wanted to use one of my favorite colors which is marine which is a dusty sort of gray blue color and some orange to use as a contrast so using those complementary colors of blue and orange um, as a pop I've got the warm colors in the background with that orange there as well and I'm going to use the orange as a focus point and for the last couple of spreads I've done on my art journal page I have to, happened to be three in a row on my art journal I've kind of used this recipe of a really large face with something happening in the background and then quite large quotes that sort of sum up what's been going on so obviously um, my brain has been telling me there's some information here you need to know or remind yourself of quite regularly so this is your focus and this is what you need to um, to work on so the quote that you'll see me painting out is um, just because you can doesn't mean you should which has been echoing through my head for the last three weeks now because um, I'm trying to be more healthy trying to eat less which is really hard when you're someone who loves food and you know just because you can eat that piece of chocolate or you know the biscuits that's sitting there doesn't mean I should be eating it so that's been the running battle in my my brain and I just thought if I had a reminder in my uh, journal that would be really good um, you'll also see I've made a classic spelling mistake here and this is the reason why I really love using acrylics because once the acrylic in the background is actually set and permanent you can actually wipe off any wet acrylics and not leave a mark which is a really a real bonus um, when you're someone who gets distracted or is watching something on the iPad instead of actually concentrating on what she's doing and sometimes makes mistakes so um, if you instead of just um, painting this on you decide to use a an, um, paint pen like a Posca paint pen you can still do the same because Posca paint pen is an acrylic paint so if you made a mistake with that you can also rub it out so I'm just going in and with a fine paintbrush and painting it in now I've actually been painting in a few of my quotes recently into my art journal usually I just use the paint pens because they're a lot quicker um, but I've, I think I've just enjoyed the being so deliberate with it by using a paintbrush I, I don't know because I, I have to slow down and take my time using a paintbrush I think it's a little bit more deliberate and I'm actually thinking about what I'm doing the other bonus about using a paintbrush is I've usually got paint left over so then I can just use my paintbrush and do some mark making around my page and that's what I'm doing this page so I've just got these little dotty lines that I'm or dotty lines dots that I'm sort of sprinkling around the page just a little bit of sort of confetti around to give a little bit of a border to my page um, and I'm actually going up through the image onto the the neck of the image which you can't really see um, on the video but you certainly can in in life it just um, brightens up the colors in the background a little bit and it's a great way to use up your paint so the other thing I'll go back in I think is um, perhaps not go and darken up some of my letters so if you find that you need a second coat on some of your letters you can always go in and add some more paint afterwards and finally I'm just going around and heating up the paint or um, drying the paint sorry just to make sure that it's all um, set I suppose then I'm going in with my Stabilo all pencil and then just redrawing over the image with really really sketchy lines um, and adding in some of that detail because I've sort of pasted this over quite a busy background adding that extra pop of black onto the page just really helps then I'm going in with my paint pen and putting in the whites of the eyes so they become a focus on the page and making sure you don't forget the catch-alls in the eyes just so they sort of brighten those up I'm also going to go around so I'm just adding in some glazing medium into the leftover paint I've got and the reason I've done that is this sort of makes your paint a little bit more liquid or fluid it you can get dedicated glazing medium 
to do this. Um, for most art shops, Dina Wakeley also sells some. If you don't have any, you can just mix in a little bit of your gel medium, your soft gel medium, and it will pretty much do the same job. The reason that I've done it is because it just is a little bit more fluid when I'm painting it on over my top coat, and you can see it's just sort of going on a little bit easier over the top of those letters. Um, by adding in the uh, glazing medium, it does make your paint slightly more transparent, not much, but it makes it a lot smoother to paint on as well. So particularly because the Dina Wakeley paints are heavy bodied, it just extends them out a little bit. So I'm now just going in with a blue to paint around my eye, around the iris. And I don't know if anyone else has um, noticed this. I, I noticed it in a face drawing class I went to last year that I tend, all my figures, if I draw them or paint them or whatever I do with them, all tend to have blue eyes because I've got blue eyes. Um, and in the class, when I sort of looked at the pictures that people were drawing and their eye color, most people automatically, without even thinking about it, pick Oh, I noticed, that may not be true, but I've noticed that most people picked um, the same colour um, eyes on their pictures as they had themselves. So it's just a little odd thing that I found. The final thing that I've done is just some journaling onto my page with a Posca paint pen, just a fine one. Oh, sorry, actually a food ball pen, which writes over everything. And just journaling about why that um, quote was quite important to me at the moment and why I needed to have it in my journal. Uh, you'll notice I had some paper down just to lean my hand on because while the football pen will go over everything, it does take a little while to dry. So you just need to make sure you sort of keep your hands out of it until it's dried. When it's dried, it's permanent, but um, yeah, it just takes a little while. One of the final things I'm doing, as I usually do when I've got text on my page is just going through and either putting a shadow or a highlight on it. So in this case I'm doing a highlight with a white pen and going around the letters. Now in all honesty when I look back at this page I kind of wish I'd done my journaling in white pen so it would have stood out a little bit more um, just to balance the page up a little bit but in the end it doesn't really matter. No one needed to read the writing that I did. Uh, I just think possibly adding a little bit more white onto the page may have been beneficial to the, the final product. But I was really happy with how this turned out. I loved the combination of the uh, tangerine and marine colour and how they really popped um, against each other. And again, just use a complementary colour. So you could do this with purple and yellow, you could do it with red and green, you'd get a similar sort of contrast with what you were doing. So I hope you found this page useful or um, helpful and um, have a go at doing something similar yourself. Please have a look at any of the other videos that um, appeal to you. And until next time, bye for now.